The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. prepare for this Mass, uh, I was watching some videos today in YouTube uh, on the life of Jesus, especially uh, on the cross. And calls my attention, the, the movie, probably you saw it, it was a 1977 movie or series about Jesus. It's called Jesus of Nazareth, written from, uh, by Franco Cifarelli. You know, and, uh, and, and, and they focus a lot on Mary. You know, uh, Mary was arriving when Jesus was crucified, was arriving with the women, and, uh, and one of the soldiers stopped her and said, Who are you? Stop right here. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm his mother. And then the, the other soldier came and said, let her, let her go. I mean, it, she is her mother, his mother. So she went, and, and Mary Magdalene were coming after her too, and the soldier stopped her and said, and, and said Who are you? He says, I'm, I'm a member of the family too. And then the soldier asked Mary, is she the member of the family? And she said, yes, she is a member of the family. And then the soldier let her go close to Jesus. And I, li I like this because we see Mary, Mary coming to Jesus at the very end of his life. Of course, uh, as his mother, he was at the beginning of his life, but we see Mary all the time until the end of Jesus. In a very special way, at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross. And what is the purpose of Mary being there at the foot of the cross? You know, I mean, just imagine you who are mothers and everybody else, just look, lo looking at your son in this situation. Looking at your son. What would be the natural feelings of Mary at that moment? A lot of pain, of course. A lot of pain but also probably cursing those who crucified Jesus because you know that your son is innocent and he's right there on the cross dying in the most terrible death that can happen at that time. Thinking about all the people who lied, thinking about all the soldiers who beat, uh, beat Jesus, Jesus, who scourged Jesus, uh, looking at those Pharisees and uh, scribes and all these authorities right there yelling at Jesus, you know, and... Uh, what would be the natural, I mean, kind of cursing them? What is the attitude of Mary? And this is what we need to learn from her, you know, beautiful things. What is the attitude of Mary? In the readings today, and in, in, in the opening prayer, it says Jesus, uh, Mary was sharing Jesus' suffering. Not only human suffering, not only human, human uh, uh, pain. Of course, that one too. That went too. But uh, she was one with Jesus at that moment. And, and, I, and I can imagine, I can imagine the Virgin Mary seeing Jesus right there, suffering, bloody, uh, dying, and say, He is my son, faithful until the end. Mary had, had a special insight of the life of Jesus because she knew who, who he was. And she knew that Jesus would suffer because she, she heard a lot of times in the synagogue that the suffering servant will die in this way. And she knew that. But she was looking at Jesus as, my son is faithful to his father, obedient until the end. 
That's what the first uh, reading we heard, a uh, letter to the Hebrews. You know, Jesus learned obedience. It doesn't mean that she was disobedient before that. No, it is because at that moment we showed truly obedience or not. We, we showed truly faithfulness or not. And Jesus was showing at that very, the most painful, powerful moment to Jesus, showing faithfulness, obedience to his heavenly Father. Why? What was the obedience? So, or, or, or obedient to what? Yes, to die by dying itself? No. Saving us. It's like a father said to Jesus, save my people. Nobody else can save them, but only you, my son. And Jesus says, I will do that, my father, because I love you. And because I love, I love them too. And I will save them, even though I have to go all these very hard situations. And Mary is right there at the foot of the cross, sharing Jesus' suffering. Jesus' salvation. It's like uh, Mary teaching us how to embrace Jesus, how to embrace the death of Jesus, how to acquire or how to make ours the salvation of Christ. You know, it's a lot, of, a lot of to meditate, and I invite you, you know, take a, take a moment today, silent moment, uh, and meditate on this, and, and try to understand the mind of Mary. You know, use your imagination. What would Mary uh, where, um, what would she was uh, feeling at that moment? Her attitude. You know, I don't see Mary like uh, all this yelling all around, like this uh, no hope or whatever. No. She was right there at the foot until the very end of Jesus, until the very end of the mission of Jesus here on earth. Seeing the salvation of Christ. Seen humanity being saved by Jesus with all the understanding that she had about it. That understanding, we don't have it. Not even the most holy person have this understanding that, and the way Jesus had, I mean, Mary had it because she was full of the Holy Spirit from the very beginning of her conception. She could understand the salvation of Christ. She could, she could understand what does it mean to be saved. And then, and then we can learn from Mary to be at the foot of Jesus, not to be afraid of, of, of the cross, like uh, yesterday we were celebrating the cross, uh, that, uh, the exaltation of the cross. Not to be afraid about the cross, but the cross is an opportunity to, to, to join our sufferings to those of Jesus, to be united with Jesus, to be one with Jesus, to be what we are, Christians, children of God, children of God. So today's feast is an invitation not to be afraid, not to be afraid. You know, I have been talking with several people who said, you know, I don't want to suffer at the end of my life. I don't want to be old because I don't want to be a, a burden to other people. I don't want to be, and that is, that moment is precisely when we grow truly in, humi in humility because we need the help of other people. We have not the strength that we used to have it. And we abandon ourselves into the hands of God. It is when we really grow in humility. Pain, suffering, age help us to grow in humility. And at the same time, it becomes an opportunity to be united with Christ. The greatest, one of the greatest graces we can receive is to be united with Christ. Everything that leads us to be united with Christ becomes a beautiful blessing. Beautiful blessing. Maybe painful pain, maybe suffering, maybe something else, whatever leads us to be united with Jesus becomes a powerful, powerful grace and blessing. So today, as we see Mary, because you know Mary always leads us to Jesus. As she was looking at Jesus, she's inviting us to look at Jesus and to make ours our salvation. So pray to the Holy Spirit to give to you at least in some degree, what Mary had in abundance, the capacity to understand and to acquire what Jesus did. Well, may the Holy Spirit help us all. Amen. Amen.
knowing that the Lord's words lead to eternal life, we turn to our Father in prayer. For an increase in religious vocations, may the Lord bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who serve our communities in elected or civic leadership, may God counsel them in holy wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who suffer from grief, may God console them in their anguish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the faith community, may the Lord help us in being joyful recipients of the new life he offers through this Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the souls of the faithful departed, may God's eternal light shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the special petitions that you hold in the silence of your heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Today's Mass intentions are for the repose of the souls of Ramiro Arediga and Chris Hunter. May they rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us continue to pray for all those who are suffering because of natural disasters, especially floods and earthquakes. But may the Lord give to them what they need at this moment of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear in humble, our humble prayers this day as we bring them to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work you give in hands who will become for us the bread of life. As members of the church, we recall the sacrifice that was shared at the table. You, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work in human hands you will become our spiritual drink. We are what we see. We receive what we are. Being many, we are one. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O merciful God, the praise of your name, the prayers to the pray, praise of your name, the prayers and sacrificial offerings which we bring to you, as we venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary whom you graciously gave to us as a most devoted mother when she stood by the cross of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim to test the Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gustavo our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who had fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask, O Lord, that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mary suffered with her Son, we may complete in ourselves for the Church's sake what is lacking in the suffering of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
This celebration has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Asking Mary to help us to share in her life, especially at the foot of the cross, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The final hymn can be found in the Blue Gather Book, number 893. Mary first among believers, and we will sing verse 5. <laughs> 